As of today, I'm a 41-year-old family man. I, uh, I've got two fabulous kids, my six-year-old daughter and nine-year-old son. I was a fit, healthy guy. I was very active in my life and I, I, didn't, I didn't feel unwell. I was playing basketball on a Tuesday night with friends and um, I went up to grab the basketball ring because oh, I'm quite a large guy, just under two metres tall and I felt my shoulder go pop. I spent a week in Frankston Hospital not knowing uh, what was wrong with me or why I had shattered my shoulder. I knew the doctors uh, were uh, unsure as to whether there was something underlying um, that, that, resu that resulted in, in the break. Well, my name's Brian Mead. Um, I've just turned 60 years of age. Um, I'm married to Carol and we've been married just on nine years. We have eight children between us, five girls and three boys, and three grandchildren. Just a few months um, beforehand, I noticed that um, I was getting more tired, suffered from lethargy, um, and it, it took me a long time to get over illnesses, um, several weeks, um, rather than just uh, a week normal. In March of 2012, Carol and I travelled overseas, and during that trip, I, I developed um, chicken pox and, and whooping cough um, and when I came back to Australia that developed into pneumonia and I saw my GP straight away and he referred me directly to hospital and I was put into an isolation uh, unit um, and from there um, I saw a haematologist and um, I was told that the blood test revealed that I had myeloma, uh, uh, a blood cancer. We were, felt like the floor had collapsed underneath us and we went dry in the mouth and just couldn't think of things to ask. I thought, what the hell is that? Um, and then the doctors went on to explain, give us some information to take home. My memory had started to wane a little bit and I was having trouble remembering protocols because I was an intensive care paramedic. Further to that, I found that on some of the longer journeys in the middle of the night, coming back from say Colac to Geelong, um, whilst the patient was in, in the vehicle but they seemed to be doing alright, I started to nod off and usually I'd be either um, having a chat with the patient or at least at the, at the very least sort of watching them and uh, so I found that I, I, I felt scared about that. I felt so the fatigue was probably one of the, the main things that, are, that concerned me initially but I was also fracturing ribs. When, when you're first told that you have cancer everything is quite a blur. Um, you want information, but at the same time I found it quite hard to seek out a lot of information myself. I guess uh, from an emotional perspective I was trying to come to terms with the fact that I have an incurable disease. Um, and so I had times when I was able to go out and find information. Um, there were times when I just wanted to turn off from it all and have a rest. Uh, the haematologist was, it just had the, the best bedside manner and he was so nervous that when he said you have multiple myeloma I almost felt like saying oh thank god I thought I had cancer and uh, he, he um, but I couldn't do it to him because he seemed like such a nice guy and uh, so I actually took it really well um, for me it's always been you know all right so this is the situation so now what do we have to do? When I was first diagnosed one thing that staggered me was the many different types of myeloma, the different characteristics that it, uh, that it shows itself or the different ways in which it shows itself. For me, I've got non-secretory multiple myeloma, which means I don't have paraproteins show up in my bloodstream. The only way in which they're able to assess uh, the amount of myeloma in my system is by doing a bone marrow biopsy and an MRI. So it was quite a learning process just understanding all of the technical aspects of myeloma and that's where I found that my haematologist really good uh, in that he was very comfortable for me to ask him a lot of questions and that's where jumping into different forums, being able to ask people around you about their experiences, that it all goes to help, uh, 
help my understanding of myeloma and, and what I'm facing. Seeing the haematologist initially, um, I was put onto a, a cycle of uh, CDT um, with three drugs, dexamethasone, thalidomide, and I forget the other one now off the top of my head, um, but a, a cycle for, for three or four months, um, which led up to uh, an autologous stem cell transplant. Um, I had that in September of 2012 and was in hospital for a couple of weeks. You watch them losing their hair, losing their abilities and you wonder whether they're ever going to survive. Nine weeks after that I had uh, a donor stem cell transplant, an allogeneic transplant from my brother's stem cells um, and uh, after that I seemed to handle both of those transplants reasonably well and things sort of went back to normal. Um, I, my, my wife and I do ballroom dancing and, and uh, I went back to ballroom dancing after about four weeks. I went uh, back to work full time after three months because I was getting bored at home. Further on, coming home, he slept a lot and there's a lot of value in them resting and you have time in that resting time um, to get things done and you start from the basics and then work out whether you can afford the time for yourself and you mustn't forget yourself um, because you have to keep yourself well and happy to support them. When I was first diagnosed in March, uh, I was very quickly uh, placed on induction chemotherapy. So it was a combination of Valcade, Cyclo and the steroid dexamethasone. That chemotherapy, I had four rounds, each round lasting approximately three weeks. Uh, once I finished the induction chemotherapy, I had radiation therapy on my shoulder. Um, as I mentioned, I had a, a broken shoulder at the time and that broken shoulder was, a, as it worked out, was a pathological fracture resulting from uh, the myeloma degrading the bone around my, around my shoulder or my upper humerus. I have a uh, kappa light chain, which is a, a form of uh, multiple myeloma, which is, can be somewhat difficult to detect, but once detected, um, you know, it, it, like multiple myeloma itself, it's, you know, there's a treatment plan and, and I'd have some uh, intravenous zometa. I've always maintained that if, if uh, something had to change, you know, if, if working shift work and the volunteering and always on the go put me in a place where I uh, unfortunately got my multiple myeloma, then something has to change to keep it away. And so giving myself license to look after myself a lot better, I feel is one of the most positive things that I can do. Something that I used to help me go beyond that, uh, go beyond just you know, the drugs and the medicines was to start um, looking at complementary therapies. Um, I see a kinesiologist, I've, I've done courses in meditation, I've done a lot of research into wellness, uh, whether it be fitness wellness, mental wellness or uh, dietary oriented wellness. Um, I, I think now I, I eat a lot better than I used to, I'm a lot fitter than I was and uh, I, I think from a mental perspective, just being able to reach out and have that support around me, um, it, it's been really helpful. And I think it's important not to let myeloma run your life. I think we have plans um, to travel again this year. We're hoping to get to Europe in June. We went to Europe last year and it's just so important for, for goal setting to, and to have those things uh, for the future planned. Don't let it run your life. It is challenging, but the one thing that I've been very reassured by is the fact that when I was going through chemotherapy, when I was going through stem cell transplant and, and when I was first diagnosed, your world comes crashing down and, and you feel, from a health perspective, you feel very unwell. And I was starting to get worried at that point in time that this is what my new normal is going to be. I, I was going to be unwell for the rest of my life. But uh, I'm happy to say that it's not the case. I, after being diagnosed 12 months ago, 
Um, having a stem cell transplant four months ago, I, I now feel really well. I do experience some fatigue, but I'm about to go back to work again. I can run around with my kids. i fit and healthy. I can go on long walks and still feel good afterwards. I think what you need is um, to stay positive. Um, it's very difficult receiving the initial diagnosis that you've got cancer. I think a lot of people are scared by that word. Um, and most people that I'm aware of haven't heard of myeloma, so it's important to find out what it is. Um, it's an incurable disease at this stage, but it's treatable. So I think we need to um, accept what we have um, and set goals for, for ourselves and, and stay positive and, and um, look to the future um, with a positive outlook. I think it's important to have a strong um, group of people around you, your, your wife, family, um, groups of friends, other people who have perhaps uh, suffered similar um, illnesses, cancers, and um, they can provide a lot of information. Uh, we love to go for walks in the fresh air and along the flat of the, the beach on the Esplanade, um, eating our home, homegrown veggies and fruit. And when we first joined dancing, we didn't know anyone. We now have 200 friends. And they are very caring as well. Family is extremely important. It's interesting to see how everybody's blossomed with their, their caring and connection. It does bring you together. I guess having the disease, it, it does play on your mind on a day-to-day -day basis. But at the same time, what it does is, is it makes me want to improve myself. For as long as my life is going to be, it's going to be the best life it can possibly be.